Meanwhile, Earth lore. It's actually pretty surprising how boring Earth lore actually is because for millions of years, a lot of things didn't really change. What's funny about this is we're moving so fast in time, we're probably not even gonna see humans. Okay, we are starting to finally get oceans. We still don't even have life yet. We have ice ages. Okay, I think we have like some funguses. There's trees finally. Wow, yeah, we I didn't see any humans. For watching that, I am now ready to take my world history exam. When you suddenly invade everyone, absolutely halt infrastructural and cultural progress in major parts of the globe, forever altering geopolitics of the world, oof, a tenth of the world's population refused to elaborate and go back home. Talk about a Mongol moment. And just like I said earlier, considering all of written history, the Mongol Empire was kind of just a flash in the pan. They kind of just blew up everything for a hundred years and went back home. Men will see this and just go, hell yeah. Moose Calvary are military units of cavalry men mounted on moose. Some sources stated Sweden tried to use mooses to replace horses. I don't know what else to say, but hell yeah. Do you know how much bigger and taller mooses are compared to horses? Imagine like a Canadian Mongol Empire, but they're riding these things. You know you're a pro when they call you a cheater for being too good at building. Like, it's literally so incredible. They had to have had aliens to help them, right? Ancient Indian architecture versus ancient British architecture. Gotta admit, there is a little bit of a difference. Beauty is in the eye of the beholder, but there is like a 2,000 year difference between these two. Most advanced ancient building in England. Lovely stones, isn't it, bruv? Me put big rock on other big rock versus least advanced ancient building in Erie. Air. Air. Oh, whoops. Air. Thank you for building such an elaborate burial place for me and my family. The inside gets lit every winter solstice by the rising sun. Okay, that is pretty epic. Yeah, but where's all this Stonehenge slander coming from? I don't understand how a single crop disease could affect population. Meanwhile, the average Irish cuisine in the 1840s. Let's see, we got potatoes, 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 and potatoes. Looks scrumptious. POV, it's November 1965 in Singapore. You've just opened your Mexican restaurant, a rarity here, fulfilling your culinary dreams. What's this? A few government officials walk in and some guests from Mexico? This is your chance to shine. You present your signature tacos, a recipe you've perfected after much effort. You bring out some dipping sauces. The guests sheepishly stare at them and the government officials ask if you have any hummus. You are mortified and rendered speechless. There is a prolonged silence. You turn to the Mexican guests. They speak. My name, Jeff. Wait, that, uh, that doesn't sound very Latino to me. <laughs> I forgot in this scene he's supposed to, uh, he's supposed to be sounding like that. Back in the 60s, Israel was providing help to the Singapore Armed Forces, but obviously that led to an awkward situation because of the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. Singapore referred to the Israeli military advisors as the Mexicans to cover up their true identities. Oh my god. The Ottoman Empire and the Soviet Union coexisted for a few years. Yeah, that makes sense. Because of World War One. I, I can see that. The Papal States and the Confederacy coexisted for four years. Yeah, I can see that too. Also makes sense. I mean, the Papacy was around for a long time. The US and the Holy Roman Empire coexisted for more than 20 years. What? What? What the f- That, for some reason, does feel a little bit more mind-blowing, even though it shouldn't be. I think they technically coexisted for longer than 20 years, too. What was the greatest achievement of the First World War? That Britain actually was allied with the French, and the Habsburgs allied with the Turks. We take this fact completely for granted, just because, you know, I mean, this happened like 100 years ago. But don't forget, for like 500 years, the Brits fought the French. Actually, even more than 500 years. And for centuries, the Austrians fought the Ottomans. Too. I mean, these are like the biggest rivalries in history. World War I was in 1914. If you went back in time and showed someone in 1814 that the British and French would be allies and the Austrians and Ottomans would be allies, I think their head would explode. Explaining the causes of World War I, you kind of need to get into basically quantum physics territory. Meanwhile, explaining the causes of World War II, mustache man, bad, was a bit more uh, black and white then. But that's what's fun about World War I. It's really great. People who say Germany could have won WW2 showing their proof. All the Austrian painter had to do is watch this one hour and 20 minute tutorial on Hearts of Iron 4. It really wasn't that hard, bro. I do it all the time. Imagine if Mustache Man had access to play Hearts of Iron 4 back in the 30s before he started everything up. That or the game War Thunder. How would that change things? Japanese scientists in WW2 finding out if you infect a three year old Chinese kid with the bubonic plague, they don't live. Wait, what? I don't think that makes any sense. Let's try it again with another. 
another one. If you don't study, you will end up like him. Meanwhile, that janitor literally was a Chinese emperor. Speaking of young Chinese kids, as a child, he was literally the emperor of all of China until China decided to fight itself. He's literally known as the last emperor of China. He did get to rule over one thing since he was put in power as the puppet state of Manchuria by the Japanese Empire, which is a little awkward, I know. Later in life, he ended up becoming a sweeper to Mao Zedong's China. He had quite the side quests. My goodness, this play is spectacular! Why, hello there, my friend. What can I do for you on this day, April 15th, 1965? Uh, hey, what are you gonna do with that? Our dear friend Lincoln sure is taking a while to fax us. I hope nothing is wrong. Oh man, this is actually so depressing. News obviously did not travel very fast back in 1865, so the Japanese were kind of left on red. At least they thought they were. This is more of a joke that didn't actually play out that if Lincoln wanted to, he could send a fax to some of the last Japanese samurai. Historians, when they saw the second trailer of Napoleon, which depicted the Battle of Austerlitz, yeah, that definitely got them to stand up, all right, trying to catch these hands with Ridley Scott. I haven't seen the movie yet. I've seen a lot of controversy about the non-historical accuracies already, just from the trailers. I do believe historians sometimes take this stuff, like, a little too far. Like, you know, it's a movie. Like, okay, maybe this headwear wasn't correct for the time period. Like, like who cares? You know, I, I don't care about that stuff. But then there are other films that are just blatantly historically inaccurate. I just think not all historical inaccuracies are created the same. There are much worse offenses than others. I feel like it's good to at least get people interested to research the topic on their own, but you also don't want to be like drastically inaccurate or you mislead the public and now they all think it happened one way. Speaking of Napoleon movies, Stanley Kubrick in America versus Ireland. One more take, it has to be perfect. Shelley Duvall from The Shining is already on her like 120th take. Meanwhile, in Ireland, I think the movie is done now. Yeah, that's uh, that's a little bit easier of a conclusion. He was making this movie and apparently some people wanted him. The crew of a Soviet destroyer watching from front row seats as the US Navy disembowels the Iranian Navy during Operation Praying Mantis. They literally did just sit there and observe the destruction. What a show. The Soviet Union after liberating a country from no-no Germany. After all, why not? Why shouldn't I keep it? And so begins that Warsaw Pact thing. Look at all these new friends they had. Experts warned to the US Navy on China, bigger fleets always win. Hmm, is that really so? I can think of a couple of examples of when that didn't work. Argentina has non-negotiable sovereignty over the Falklands. The country's new leader just said Falkland War 2.0, let's go. Are they sure they want to do that again? Um, what are you doing in Argentina? Mind your own business. What are they claiming he's down there too? Uh, sir, we have found a potential flaw in our equipment. All right, show me. Okay, can you explain what the freak I'm looking at? Oh no, did they get like stuck together? Apparently they did have to fix that. The Japanese army, finally we have taken Shanghai. Meanwhile, 400 Chinese soldiers in a warehouse. I didn't hear no bell. Sounds like the Chinese version of the Alamo or something, except the warehouse. Mercenaries in 1527 attack the Pope in the Vatican. Meanwhile, his 189 Swiss guardsmen. Remember that the Swiss nation might have been pretty neutral, but the Swiss people, whoever wants to pay him. I'm more referring to mercenaries. That This might be a different situation, though. Attila invades Italy. Pope Leo, hey bro, could you not? Attila, understandable. Have a nice day. Another one of those great examples of it can't hurt to ask. <laughs> Worst he can say is no. Hawaii for hundreds of years. I will unify these islands. We will see about that. After British arrive, uses guns for 15 year long conquest. 76% depopulation finally unified. I love learning about Hawaiian history. It's so interesting. Talk about a Kamehameha moment. But my Kaiser, the 20th century begins in 1901 because there is no year zero. I decree that tomorrow, January 1st of 1900, it is the start of the 20th century. I guess he did do that too. Polish soldiers in Haiti after finding out they were actually here to put down a slave right. revolt. No, no, all right. um, I know that Poland was not very happy bad. with France and that is why they changed sides. Also why apparently the Polish are honorary Haitians. Break off, you're not welcome here. Uh, okay. Proceeds to start a new colony where everyone is welcome, spends his life learning Native American languages and their culture. Yo, that actually sounds pretty fun. Just went out here and started his own thing. I guess. This is the life of Roger Williams. Soviet double agents Harold and John here in the M16 Section 5 Counterintelligence Section. B 
being tasked with finding Soviet double agents like themselves. Hmm, wanted KGB spies. Uh, oh wait, that's me. It's like the end of a movie, some sort of a twist. Person that's supposed to find the double agents is the double agent. Quite possibly the biggest difference between Western philosophy and Eastern, never trust a friend who is silent versus never trust a friend who speaks. What? What does that mean? Trust no one, not even yourself. Meanwhile, the Vietnam ghost tapes. We sure got a lot of Americans today. Uh, can you hear that strange sound? Ooh. Must be the souls of the dead. This was a psychological game the US was playing with Vietnam during the Vietnam War. Since the Vietnamese believed that if you didn't get a proper burial, your soul would wander. Japan was forced into the war when the US illegally embargoed them of essential oil. Why did the US embargo them? Hmm, I wonder why. Could this have anything to do with it? No, right? This tree seems perfect for my research on the little ice age period. I shall call you WPN114. Very soon after, what have I done? Unfortunately, this person just happened to cut down the world's oldest tree, or the world's oldest non-colonial organism. It was cut down in the 60s, and it was possibly around 5,000 years old. Talk about it. Oof moment. Tank commanders, when their tanks get hit, the US screaming expletives, Germany screaming Hans, back up, back up, the UK, bloody hell, that was rough, everybody alright? Meanwhile, Russia, oh, hello, Gunner Ivan. Happy to see you join me up here. Don't feel like talking? I get you, I get you. You know what? When I was a little boy, I wanted to be a cosmonaut when I grew up. Now, Ivan, look at the stars. Very pretty, no? Um. And big thanks to the patrons. Drew, I'm your dad, back with the milk. Look outside. John Denver. Luxembourg lover. I can't sleep without Drew's voice. Aaron F. Amateur archaeology. Fat. Carmel Norwal. S. Frederick Tiblin. Good ol' Ryan. Inquisitor Jack Trigg's annoying friend. Let me know is ten. best Robert Ryan. E. The Pie. Sebby, if you hear this, I love you. And why am I doing this?